Well, we're joined now by Dr. Gregory Jones, who is the director of the Evanstad Center for Wine Education at Linfield College in McMinnville, Oregon. Uh, he's written extensively on the whole subject of climate change and wine, uh, and he joins us now, I think, from a vineyard. Dr. Jones, can you briefly describe where you're standing exactly? Sure, I'm standing in the heart of the Willamette Valley American Viticulture Area at a vineyard called Yamhill Valley Vineyards uh, and a beautiful uh, uh, spring morning. Dr. Jones, Oregon is not necessarily known for its uh, wine growing. Is this something that's developed over the last 20 years and does it have anything to do with climate change? Well, the Oregon wine industry uh, really uh, started in the 1960s. We uh, uh, started slow because the climates were a little challenging back then. And uh, uh, fast forward to today, we have a, a a climate that's very conducive to uh, wonderful cool climate uh, wine production uh, in the Willamette Valley and warmer climate wine production in other regions. Mm -hmm. well, what's the situation uh, with vineyards in the United States with regard to climate change and how does it compare to what's happening in Europe? Sure, um, you know vineyards and uh, wine production areas uh, throughout the United States have seen uh, warmer and longer growing seasons. Uh, 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 less spring frost and uh, much more conducive conditions. However, we've also seen in the past five to 15 years, much more heat stress, uh, increasing drought stress, and, and other extreme issues that are problematic. What, what kinds of strategies do you see in the future to adapt, uh, for the vineyards to adapt to climate change? Well, you know, I think agribusinesses in general and wine production specifically have always uh, been very adaptable. If you're in an agricultural business and you don't adapt to the weather and climate, you're not going to be in business very long. And so I think uh, uh, producers ha are, 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 who are going to uh, be around for a long time have been adapting all along. And so what are we doing today? I mean, people are looking at uh, uh, different varieties, different uh, uh, vine management strategies, looking at better water management, uh, and, and looking to uh, manage the plant system so that they're ripening fruit at the right time of year with the right conditions. I noticed that you've written in the past and talked about the different kinds of bacteria and insects and diseases that might take place. Is that also a factor? It's not just the, the growing of the grapes. There are other things that could come into play with uh, climate change, no? Sure, uh, all agriculture has issues related to pests and diseases and, and grapevines are no exception. Uh, we have uh, become uh, very uh, uh, proactive in terms of how we deal with this with certain uh, characteristics of uh, using uh, pesticides, but most people are going to more sustainable approaches. However, when climates change, uh, the nature of uh, pests and diseases can change. Uh, new pests can be brought into an area and they can, they can uh, uh, you know, grow and, 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 and cause more problems that we don't know. So we have to be very careful about how we introduce plant material and manage that plant material in a changing climate. What kind of priorities do you think the wine industry should set uh, going forward, given what climate change is doing year after year? Well, I think, the, uh, I think what's happening already is very important. There's a, a very large engagement going on within the wine industry, looking at becoming more sustainable in general, uh, better understanding how uh, the entire value chain is affected by climate change, and trying to be much more proactive, looking at uh, uh, a better understanding just how we can grow grapes in a changing environment. I know that you're uh, actively engaged in research. Is research a big factor in this? Or you see in the future that uh, there's going to be a great deal more research needed in uh, various kinds of uh, vines that can be grown and that sort of thing? No, I, there, it's, it's already going on everywhere uh, that, that uh, wine grapes are being produced worldwide today. You know, I've been mostly doing more of the climate assessment kind of component of it, looking at how how and why climates are changing. But in grape growing regions throughout the world today, you're seeing much more uh, plant breeding, uh, genetic research, uh, water management research, uh, uh, pest and disease uh, mo uh, monitoring and, and planning, so that uh, we, can, we can look at the plant system in a more holistic way and be much more sustainable, uh, less vulnerable and more adaptive in the future. You, met, you mentioned the water research, and I, I know that just next door in California, they've had tremendous problems in the last year or two with fires and with uh, the dryness there. Uh, is that going to be a concern in the future? Well, of course. Most of the climate change uh, work has showed that uh, areas in Australia, South America, Europe, uh, 
and, and the western United States are not only supposed to get warmer, but they're supposed to get drier. So drier summers with higher temperatures, more heat stress, is likely to lead to more fires and potentially uh, much more impacts from uh, fire and smoke related issues. So managing water is really an important part of it, but being more resilient around the ecosystems in terms of uh, managing how uh, fire might impact a given area is really important. That, I, I guess that, that, that uh, the producers seem to be uh, more committed to a more environmental approach. Is, is, is that a reason for optimism? Are you optimistic about the future or pessimistic about the future of the wine industry? Well, I, 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 in some ways I'm overall pessimistic about society's approach to dealing with climate change. But from a wine industry perspective, I'm very optimistic because the wine industry has been sustainable. It uh, it's, has a largely a green focus to try to be much more proactive uh, because but they're both part of the problem, but really a big part of the solution too. And so I think that as the industry adopts uh, more and more green practices and sustainable practices, that we have a chance to be a leader within agribusinesses to help better understand how we can kind of cope and, and adapt to climate change in the future. One of, one of the things that the wine producers over here are doing is they're purchasing vineyards that are further and further north uh, uh, because of the, the heat, the, the, the increased heat. Is that something you're seeing there too? Are, are vineyards moving further north in Oregon and Washington and into Canada? And yeah, I think this is going on worldwide. If you look at how climates change and think about geography, the, the natural progression is you either move north in latitude or poleward in latitude uh, toward the coast or up in elevation. So people who are diversifying their geographical risk are looking at moving to different latitudes. And, and we've recently uh, uh, published some research that looked at the uh, polar fringes of agriculture for, uh, for growing grapes. And we find that uh, vineyards are up in uh, Scandinavia today, of course, England, parts of Canada, Tasmania and the southern island of, um, of New Zealand, and those are becoming more and more viable as the climate continues to warm. Are, are there going to be some parts of the world that may not be able to grow wine in the future? I'm thinking maybe North Africa or Portugal or some places where they've had severe drought effects? Well, I, I always look at it this way. If what we know today is correct and we know the limits of agriculture uh, for given uh, crop species like grapes, then we know that there's a, a limit to uh, the, the, uh, uh, the warmer climates in which they can grow for high quality wine production. So yes, there will be places that will be challenged. They likely could go to different varieties or different winemaking styles uh, to produce a product that may suit that different climate. But there will be challenges on the warmer end of, uh, of the wine grape growing world. Doctor, thank you very much for joining us today at Vin Expo. Thank you, take care, sir.